On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we are talking about Star Trek Prodigy 116 Preludes, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to Star Trek Universe, the podcast where you get to listen in on two lifelong friends talk about Star Trek. My name's Matthew Carroll. I'm David C. Robertson. What's up, Dave? How you doing, bud? Uh, I've been better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, your car broke now. Your car's, like, busted this week. Yeah. If anyone out there in the listenership has a car that they want to give Dave or sell him for a dollar, reach out. <laughs> I'll, I'll drive him to pick it up. Or, uh, you know, PayPal me some money. They're just <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. What's your PayPal? <laughs> um god what is my paypal oh see you've uh, lost them already they've already turned it off they don't even know i know, I know. <laughs> i'll put it in the show notes <laughs> <laughs> so paypal dave so you can get a new car facebook pay venmo <laughs> cash app i'm on all of them all of it all of it yeah man um okay so let's talk about prodigy yeah man sure what'd you think of this uh episode 16 uh, yes, 116. Um, I was, did, well, first of all, did you notice that they, it was the, like, pretty much the entire writer's room wrote this wep- this episode. <laughs> oh, that's fun. No, I didn't notice that. Yeah. I guess they just all like took backstories because it's, it reminded me a lot of, um, that episode of Firefly where we, where we get all the backstories. You remember that? Where like no, I'm spacing on it right now. Uh, that episode was like where Mal was yes, like do. mortally wounded, and he falls on the grate, and Out he's of like, gas. Remem- yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like remembering getting the ship, and yeah. So it reminded me a lot of that, and um, but yeah, I liked it. I did feel like um, some of I think I guess it's just like a symptom of it being a 30 minute show because I felt like some right. of this was really rushed because not only did we get the, the backstories of all of the kids, except for Murph, we also got the backstory for the diviner. Yeah. Which felt like it should have been its own total episode. I mean, any it of felt these- like it should have been its own two parter. Right. Absolutely. Um, I, I agree with that. And I understand what they're trying to do here. They're trying to fit a lot of story in a little time, but I do kind of feel like they've done a few encounters sort of these encounter episodes that could have been scrapped for a little more of that backstory. Yeah. Um, of course I understand when you're watching, when you're making sort of a kid's show, spending two episodes on the villains. Also, it might've made them too, um, uh, <laughs> like too empathetic. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Maybe giving us too much empathy for their position. If we're like, I mean, even watching that short part where they're like, all right, it's only the hundred of us and we're going out into the galaxy to strike out. I was kind of rooting for him a little bit, you know, <laughs> I was not, I was actually annoyed by like, first of all, like notice that like all of the kids, the backstories were animated normally. Okay. But the Diviner's backstory that he was being told uh, almost looked like old war propaganda. Like, it was, like, very, very stylized. It very much looked like it was uh, an unreliable narrator situation. Hmm, Like, this is, from their perspective, what happened. Well, sure. It definitely is. Yeah, but, like, even with their perspective, I'm sitting there going, so how is Starfleet? wrong here i mean they're just mad because starfleet didn't like save them from themselves i'm like this is your war you guys were yeah war. and now you're gonna take revenge on starfleet because oh, i agree with that you were killing each other <laughs> <laughs> i didn't agree with their initial reason i guess but like yeah by the end and they're all it just it, it, it gave them a good hero moment where they're all like diving into the mystery and like taking their one in a hundred chance to survive and all that stuff yeah, but even, you know, even with that, like, I'm not shitting on that completely with, you know, a villain backstory. I mean, you know, even Khan, 
even when I watch Wrath of Khan, I'm like, eh, this is horse shit, Khan. You know it. Like at the end of Space Seed, you you chose to go to SETI Alpha Five because yeah. it was better to uh, you know reign in hell. Like Kirk told you it was going to be bad. He didn't know how bad it was going to be because he didn't know SETI Alpha Six exploded. But you knew something was going to you know <laughs> it was, yeah. was going to be rough for sure. And now it's like he never came back to check on us. Wah. <laughs> right well and they are the villains of the piece so it's like yeah yeah let them be let them let them make a decision you don't agree with like that's fine yeah um but I just so that's why was i wasn't empathetic that's why i was empathetic to the vonukat or whatever they're right. called that's what i mean i guess if you spend two yeah. episodes with them you might get to the point where you like you either need to feel empathetic for them to make it through two episodes and not feel like ah these guys are horseshit the whole time or you kind of need uh uh, yeah, or you need to have more to it, I guess. Yeah, or I mean, you know, what would have been great and interesting, even though it would have upset people. Um, but you know, I thrive on on good storytelling over uh, making fans happy. You could, you should, they should have had that the, the Starfleet crew that they encountered actually try to stop it and make wind up making things worse. Hmm. on their planet like maybe they you know maybe someone just like we had garavik a couple episodes ago who went down to try to save that planet uh you could have actually had like the captain decides like no we're gonna we're gonna try to figure out a way to save these people and just makes it way way worse either through escalation or uh you know there's just something more interesting than they didn't help right. us right so does this mean that this is where Chakotay is? He's in the future? I don't know, man. Also, he's in an alternate future? I don't I don't so, think so. Like I was confused about that. And I haven't <laughs> He was the they were the second ship to show up. So there was a ship that showed up and then they disappeared into a time vortex. And then there was a big war. And then or the war continued and then Chakotay's ship showed up and some years later, as far as I understand it. Right, but all of that is in the future, because then the diviner yeah, and maybe. the vindicator come back in time. That's the whole storyline, yeah. right? Like the, yeah, that's what I he guess told his he daughter did. last last season yeah. was that they had to go back in time because in the future, because in the in the world mm-hmm. as it is currently, there were there's civilization still exists and has not been destroyed yet, and he's so, trying yeah. to destroy the Federation so they never encounter them and cause the civil war. Yes, right. So yeah, I guess he escaped, and he's maybe he's on Solom. Yeah, but he's in, on that in an alternate future. So what does that mean? It, it's so like yeah, yeah. I guess time right, travel guess rules, right, man. Yeah, so that's <laughs> what like, happened. And he sent the protostar back into the time anomaly. Yeah, and escaped. So he's living in some alternate future somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. Can okay. they even reach him? Is my question. Like, I mean, I'm, I assume they will. Or maybe this is how he's written out of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. And well, what's funny you joking is about it, but that, that could well be. Sorry, he's on an alternate future that no longer exists because we've changed the timeline. We can't get there. You can't get there from here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I had to talk it through a little bit. But yeah, you're right. He's stuck in an alternate future somewhere. And what's funny is like I kept. Yeah, you know, I saw people on Twitter who like Chakotay died for the. I'm like, when did he die? We just, he just set the protostar to run off and go into the thing. We didn't see him die. He's no, somewhere. We, not we never saw a body. We never saw a body. Not dead, but does not exist currently. We're in this timeline, in this right. time period. Which and maybe fine. even this timeline. I mean, if they stop the Diviner and the Vindicator, then like, it's very possible that, that, that this is the same timeline, you know? Yeah. And he's just sitting up in the future somewhere. Yeah. And this was always I'm, meant to happen. I mean, I assume the 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 proto stars, uh, you know, warp what what have you, will be capable of going into the future and grabbing Chicote at some point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so too. I wonder if it'll be by the end of this season because we only got four episodes left. Yeah. But it does seem like this whole diviner storyline is coming to a head um, now that Janeway's Janeway knows what's going on and. 
uh, seems like the crews are going to coalesce at some point. Seems like it. I don't like the Janeway's finally figured out like, oh, okay, so these are kids. They're in over their heads. They're yeah. Part sure. of the unwanted. Blah, blah, blah. So what did you think of the backstories in general? Um, the backstories, um, Jenkin Poggs was a little fun and it silly. Fun. But it was, it was fun, also but it was like, also him getting a little crazy, and he is a yeah. little crazy. And I like that he like slowly kind of went mad fixing the ship. Yeah, and finally just like decided to walk out an airlock. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean that was kind of heartbreaking. Like it was. It was one of those great things where you're like sitting there watching, and you're going, "This is silly," and then it gets so heartbreaking, and you realize. Oh, the reason he refers to himself in the in the third person all the time is some kind of like messed up bullshit from is like a coping mechanism from his trauma. Yeah. And you're well, like this weird Pavlovian oh, thing where he had to say his name over and over to this robot. Yeah. And so he kept having to say Jankum Pog, Jankum Pog, Jank. So now that's why he says it all the time. And it's 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 really strange. Yeah, he's been driven a little mad and his whole like he trained himself to be an engineer. Like, so that's why he's kind of, we always kind of knew he was like, not a real engineer, his whole percussive yeah. maintenance thing. Well, he was um, a train. He was in training. Right. Sure. He said, right. right. So he didn't completely train himself, but you know, I, I my God, the thing was like, Oh, by the way, all that work you did. Thanks for doing that. By the way, uh, you've used up too much oxygen. So <laughs> you need to leave. <laughs> Damn man. Well, it didn't say he needed to leave. No, but he was like, uh. but but yeah, it's such a it's a great moment. It shows Jenkin Pog's character in multiple ways. I, I liked his backstory a lot. Yeah. Uh, what about what yeah. about Rock Rock Talk Rock Talk? I felt like was I felt like it was a story I'd seen before. Like we always get these like gladiator type stories, where it's yeah. like you know the monster versus. I mean, it felt like Thor Ragnarok. Cord, you know <laughs> yeah well the difference is to um, me it felt more like a fair or like a like a like a freak show yeah like a yeah. traveling circus sort of situation you know which i thought was kind of cool it um, felt more like that actually yeah. gladiatorial it's like they're just a traveling show really right right it makes me really sad because he really had a bond with the hero mm-hmm. she's just such a positive like hopeful optimistic character and then you know but just it, it even highlights more that moment in the first episode which was so powerful when uh doll finally puts the translator on her mm-hmm. and she speaks and it's like oh she's she's not a monster like it, we all thought she was a monster until that moment you know yeah. so good doll scared of her and then you know she has the yeah. voice of a little girl. It's, it's such a great moment. That that's one of my favorite things about the the opening of the series is her yeah. little her story. And this was just an extension of that, and that's why I liked it. Yeah, I I was fine with it. I liked it. I was really happy that the um <laughs> the gladiator that she was fighting, quote unquote, wasn't the dick. <laughs> You know what do you like mean? he was he was like i thought like he, he was gonna be like guy. yeah he wasn't the bad guy it was really like yeah. the, the asshole who like ran the thing that was rough like, they all have like really tragic sad backstories mm-hmm. <laughs> zeros was sad like yep maybe not as sad in some ways as some of the others but we saw the um the medusa ship that looked just like the one in um is there in truth no beauty from the remastered version of that episode of tos interesting um cool. they were wearing the red the the kazons wearing those red uh visors that spock had to wear when dealing with the medusans in that episode okay i saw um, the red visors but i didn't know the reference yeah, I assumed that it was, was so they could look at them. Yeah, 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 without going cool. mad. But that's yeah, from yeah. the original series, straight up. Like, the containment unit, everything is, like, on the up and up, straight out of TOS, which you know is always going to be near and dear to my stupid heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, I like it. So, uh, yeah, I, I I dug that, and uh, I, I don't know. I kind of wish we'd gotten some kind of Murph backstory rather than just a belch but uh whatever <laughs> that's fine <laughs> well he can't really communicate yet so we'll we'll have to see i mean i guess yeah. uh, can zero uh read his mind 
I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's either. interesting. Because we guess we have through a, zeros, like perception of what's going on in yeah. Marv's head. And I would, I would hope that they come back to that line uh, where they're like, "Hey, were you, why were you reading my mind?" And Zero's like, "Because I care." I'm like, can we not do that? Can can we have like a situation where they all sit down and be like, "Dude, stop reading our minds without our permission." <laughs> Yeah. That's not okay. Like that is an an ethical it's an invasion problem. Invasion of privacy. Yeah. Um. And the whole time Zero is just sitting there going like, "Actually, so and so has a great story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I read their mind. Like that is mm-hmm. bullshit, Zero. I understand <laughs> that you're a Medusa and you miss your hive mind, but that is horseshit, and you need to stop. Not okay, bud. Not okay. <laughs> we we love you, but you got to make some changes in your life, Zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I would be super mad. <laughs> I would be like, I'm not telling a story. I, you're not going to force me into telling a story because you read my damn mind. Go away. I don't like you anymore. That is very much how you would be. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't oh, try yeah. to turn this on me. <laughs> I didn't. I, I agreed with you. <laughs> you're like, yes, this is how you would be. <laughs> It is. It is how you would be. You said it. I agreed with you. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I would be the same way. I mean, it depends on what they're revealing about me to everyone, but, you know. Yeah. I would not. If be you don't tell your story, I will. <laughs> Best put your spin on it so I could tell when you're lying. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the episode. It sure is. Other, any other big moments or anything that you stood out to you? Well, I mean, Janeway now knows that who the Diviner is. And yeah. Yeah, that, we'll talk about uh, that for a second. Instant Asensia is not who she claimed to be. Yeah. I just think it's. it, it seems, I mean, we've got four episodes left. It seems mm-hmm. like this is leading toward like a major confrontation that might. Yeah wrap up i mean it is season one i was i was about to say these first two seasons uh not even even to tease you this time uh Mm -hmm. but it seems like we're getting to a resolution to this storyline which makes sense it being uh bringing the first season to a close so Mm -hmm. i'm excited i'm excited to uh get uh, get all of that on the table especially after we heard you know i know they have a plan for the first few seasons and um one of the, I remember one of the creators was talking about how, like, I'd love to see these guys, like, join Starfleet. And we watch them, like, move up the ranks and stuff, right. you know, which would be really cool. But this could be the beginning of that, you know? Yeah. So, I dig it. I, I really wonder, once once all this shakes out, will they still have the Protostar? You know, will that still be a thing? Especially if they join the Federation. Like, I can't imagine them keeping that ship. Mm-hmm. Well, the show's called Prodigy, not Protostar. Oh, yeah, I know. I think the Protostar will be around long enough with their special engine to go and get Chakotay. And then after that, it's up in the air. But uh, yeah, you know what? I I do wish that some of the, in some ways, I wish that some of this was uh, revealed. Like, uh, it seems like Zero may have or should have at some point brought up the fact that like, hey, Gwen, you were one of the ones who captured me. You were there. You were there, like, enslaving me. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that may have been, like, an area of contention. Hmm. Because in the flashback, we see Gwen taking custody of Zero, and then she apologizes. Well, she did that for all of them, though. Like, I I know. I know. She she was, like, like an active... I mean, it was. I mean, I I, I don't mean to, like, shoot your thought down, but in the uh, first season, if you remember, she was, like, a prisoner for the first, like, four episodes. Like mm-hmm. they, they, it was a while before they trusted her because she was like the yeah, diviner's pro, the diviner's pro, progeny. There's too many things: protostar, prodigy, and progeny. I, I just can't. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. It just feels like this far out that it's a weird note to 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 hit back on that she was there, almost like a uh, I forgive but I don't forget type of situation for the audience right. like mm. oh no Gwen was there and then you you know like I did yeah. I was just like unravels. wait like, we oh, should yeah. have talked about that and they de- <laughs> they did they definitely did but like without this beat in the story earlier it feels right. 
weird. It does. It's it's weird to look back and see her just on the bad guy's side. <laughs> that's, like, like, you know, it, that's a good point though, because like the, the the characters really have grown. Yeah, for sure, man. Over these um, last four seasons, hugely, hugely. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really like I just love these arcs that carry over multiple seasons like this. I really do. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay well i think that's about it for tonight uh yeah what, we don't what? have any feedback yet so no feedback yet what it's monday no. i know andre man. Stu, what are you doing <laughs> our only off. two feedbackers <laughs> uh, one recently discovered apparently <laughs> yeah which was funny because it was like we didn't get anything from Andre or Stu this week, but we did get one from Andre on DC on screen. So it was that like, was ah, switching up on us, huh? I'll yeah, take man. that. <laughs> 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 well, uh, guys, thanks for joining us. We'll be back soon. Uh, and uh, excited. Uh, yeah. Former episodes. What comes after Prodigy? Um, we have Picard in February. Wow. That's a while. It's a waste still. So we yeah. may have a few weeks off of I don't Star know. Trek. I have no idea. It's been pretty like one show coming right up to the next lately. Yeah. You know, I've got some uh, two or three episodes uh, recorded, but not edited. Yeah. yeah that, cool. Uh, I can put up, but sweet. And we can always cover news and stuff and just chat about we, we, we guys. We've cover got nudes. We what nudes? Oh, yeah, man. I've got I've got those nudes. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. Jill on true. <laughs> Live long and prosper. We're going to be talking about, like, this week we're covering Denise Crosby's nude scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Which Star Trek ladies <laughs> just go through every Star Trek lady and give their, uh, their, their, like, nudography and, like, all the moments. <laughs> Yeah, that would be terrible. That would be so terrible. What's the uh, what's that in uh, Knocked Up? That's their like idea for a website. You remember that? Yeah, and like they they have to point out to him. You know, Mister Skin exists, right? Oh my god, <laughs> it's just like, already. A but thing. does he do this? Yes, like, that's yeah, exactly course, what he does. Of course, he does that. It's a really good movie. We've put years into this. <laughs> just like, and they're like doing, like literally just like cataloging movies and yeah. writing down times, just watching like, oh my God. You, you do what you love. You never work a day in your life. Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music.